আসসালামু আলাইকুম আই এম ডক্টর মোহাম্মদ নাহিদ সালমান অ্যাসিস্ট্যান্ট প্রফেসর অফ ডিপার্টমেন্ট অফ ফিজিওলজি অফ আদ্দিন আকিজ মেডিকেল কলেজ খুলনা আই ওয়েলকাম ইউ অল অন মাই ভিডিও ক্লাস টুডে আওয়ার টপিক ইজ অটো রেগুলেশন অফ রেনাল ব্লাড ফ্লো ওয়াট ডিউ মিন বাই অটো রেগুলেশন হোয়াট ইজ অটো রেগুলেশন কিডনি হ্যাজ অ্যান ইন্ট্রেন্সিক অ্যাবিলিটি টু মেনটেন ইটস ওন ব্লাড প্রেশার ডেসপাইট অফ সাডেন ফল অফ টোটাল বডি ব্লাড প্রেশার অ্যাজ উই নো কিডনি ইজ অ্যান মেজর এক্সক্রিটরি অর্গান সো ইট হ্যাজ টু এক্সক্রিট মেটাবলিক ওয়েস্ট প্রোডাক্ট ফ্রিকুয়েন্টলি অ্যান্ড টু এক্সক্রিট দিস মেটাবলিক ওয়েস্ট প্রোডাক্টস ইট হ্যাভ টু এনশিওর দ্য কনস্ট্যান্ট রেনাল ব্লাড ফ্লো অ্যান্ড ফর মেনটেন্যান্স অফ দিস কনস্ট্যান্ট ব্লাড ফ্লো কিডনি হ্যাজ টু ডেভেলপ অ্যান ইন্ট্রেন্সিক অ্যাবিলিটি টু মেনটেন ইটস ওন ব্লাড প্রেশার and that is the our topic and auto regulation of renal blood flow first of all we have to know what are the mechanisms involved in this auto regulations first one is tubular glomerular feedback mechanism second one is glomerular tubular balance and the third one is myogenic auto regulation of the renal blood flow now i will discuss elaborately about the first one that is tubular glomerular feedback mechanism from the name we can get several information about this mechanism in this tubular glomerular feedback mechanism tubular portion of the nephrons and the glomerulus will be involved and these mechanisms have another two components first one is efferent arteriolar feedback mechanism and the second one is efferent arteriolar feedback mechanism now uh, your examiner can ask you a tricky question why uh, this uh, mechanism is called feedback as because if our body blood pressure increases these mechanisms will maintain the constant uh, renal blood flow by decreasing renal blood pressure and if our uh, blood pressure falls down suddenly it will maintains again the constant renal blood flow by increasing renal blood pressure and that's why this mechanism is called feedback mechanism now we will come to the first point that is efferent arteriolar feedback mechanism if our blood pressure arterial blood pressure falls suddenly what will happen the renal blood flow initially will be decreased and if there is decreased renal blood flow the renal glomerular hydrostatic pressure will be decreased if there is decreased glomerular hydrostatic pressure the glomerular filtration rate will be decreased and if the glomerular filtration rate or gfr is decreased there will be less amount of glomerular filtered but there will be constant uh, tubular reabsorption in the proximal convoluted tubule that is about 65% of the tubular load that means 65% of the tubular load will be reabsorbed from the proximal convoluted tubule so sodium chloride the osmotically active particles will be uh, reabsorbed from proximal convoluted tubule and in response of this reabsorption of sodium chloride macula densa of the jg complex which i have discussed in our previous class macula densa is a specialized densely packed cells which are very sensitive to decreased sodium ion will be excited and in response what will happen the efferent arteriole will be relaxed the diameter of the efferent arteriole will be increased and by this increment of the efferent arteriole the glomerular filtration rate will be increased and by this mechanism kidney maintains its renal own blood flow and this mechanism is called efferent arteriolar feedback mechanism now we come to the second component of the tubular glomerular feedback mechanism that is efferent arteriolar feedback mechanism 
it starts with the same mechanism that means if the arterial pressure of our body falls down suddenly uh, the glomerular hydrostatic pressure will be decreased if there is decreased glomerular hydrostatic pressure there will be decreased amount of glomerular filtrate but the constant 65 percent of the tubular load will be reabsorbed from the proximal convoluted tubule and this will cause decreased amount of sodium chloride to reach towards the macula densa and these macula densa cells are highly sensitive to sodium ion so if there is deficiency of sodium ion these macula densa cells will be excited and in response of this excitation there will be release of renin renin is an specialized enzyme which will activate the inactive angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1 and this angiotensin 1 uh, will travel through the capillary system of our body and reach to the lungs alveoli capillary system and in this capillary systems there is a special uh, enzyme present that is angiotensin converting enzyme this enzyme will convert angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2 and this angiotensin 2 will come towards again come towards the efferent arteriole and causes the constriction of efferent arteriole as the constriction of efferent arteriole occurs the diameter of the efferent arteriole will be decreased and in our previous mechanism of the efferent arteriolar feedback mechanism we got the dilation of the efferent arteriole and now we have got the constriction of the efferent arteriole and for these both mechanism the hydrostatic pressure in the glomerulus will be increased and this increased hydrostatic pressure will ensure the maximum amount of glomerular filtrate and by this mechanism uh, kidney maintains its comparatively constant GFR that means glomerular filtration rate. Now we have to know what is the importance of tubular glomerular feedback mechanism. By this mechanism kidney maintains its own renal blood flow relatively constant and by this mechanism kidney maintains its GFR relatively constant at and thirdly it will ensure its mechanism of removal of metabolically waste products uh, by ensuring the constant glomerular filtration rate. Now the second portion of the autoregulation of renal blood flow is glomerulotubular balance. If the arterial pressure of our body is suddenly increased, what will happen? The renal blood flow will be increased. As a result, glomerular filtration rate will be increased. And if the glomerular filtration rate is increased, the tubular reabsorption will be increased. Uh, to maintain its constant reabsorption level 65%. So there is no excess amount of excretion of sodium chloride will happen. Now uh, we will come to the third component of the autoregulation system of our renal system and that is myosinic autoregulation of renal blood flow. If renal arterial blood pressure is increased, the myosinic response will be activated. The secondary relaxation of the uh, smooth muscle of the renal blood vessels will occur and this relaxation will causes will minimize the sudden increase pressure of the renal arterial blood flow and this will cause uh, the sudden drop of renal blood pressure and by this mechanism renal blood pressure uh, will come to towards the normal level and this is all for today thank you all for having patience uh, in our next class, we will discuss another topic.